Sarah Jackson. Many thanks for joining us at this time. Now that uh, Al Bashir has been moved uh, to a maximum security prison, uh, what are your thoughts now as it doesn't appear that the military will hand him over to the ICC as Amnesty wants? Well, first and foremost, it's absolutely critical that former President Al Bashir faces justice justice for allegations of very serious crimes that were committed under his rule. Um, Al-Bashir is wanted by the International Criminal Court on charges of genocide, war crimes and crimes against humanity. And while the Sudanese go through a period of rebuilding their justice system, we believe that Al-Bashir should be immediately surrendered to the International Criminal Court. And uh, but what if, uh, Sarah, uh, the country says it is very willing to prosecute uh, al-Bashir now for all his uh, allegations of war crimes against him? Well, the International Criminal Court works under the principle of complementarity, and that means that the court steps in where countries are either unwilling or unable uh, to provide uh, fair prosecutions and investigations. And the track record of the Sudanese judicial system is not strong in this regard. And so it's absolutely important um, for victims and survivors of these crimes to see justice that um, former President Bashir is taken to the court. Meanwhile, it's, it's absolutely critical that Sudan goes through a process of rebuilding its justice system so that over time it's able to show that it is, is both willing and able to provide justice in um, important cases. Will this, your response still stand in the light of uh, the lingering protests even after uh, the military eventually took over power from uh, President Umar al-Bashir now? What do you have to say? Well, there are a number of outstanding and very serious human rights concerns in Sudan. You see that protesters are continuing their sit-in outside military headquarters, calling for more change. So far, we've seen that this military transitional council has rescinded the curfew in place, has released some prisoners and has made a commitment to investigate and prosecute those responsible for killing protesters. But much more needs to be done in Sudan, as well as justice um, in the case of former President al-Bashir, this need for a widespread overhaul and reform of Sudan's infamous NIST, the National Intelligence and Security Service, this need for greater press freedom, this need for rebuilding of the, the judicial service mm. um, and so on. So this need for really widespread reforms. What we've seen is 30 years of President uh, al-Bashir's repressive rule and now it's time for a kind of rebirth of Sudan in a way that respects human rights. All right, Sarah Jackson, we pr appreciate your time with us on TVC News. Uh, Sarah Jackson is of uh, the Amnesty International. Many thanks for joining us.